Good morning. Good morning and welcome. This is Mr. B's Sunday School. I am Mr. B, also known as Bruce Ehrlich, and today we're here to consider the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And we're going to learn about a man named Zacchaeus. Now, some people pronounce his name Zacchaeus. Uh, I like to pronounce it Zacchaeus. Some of the experts pronounce it Zacchaeus. Um, now, the experts can't seem to agree on the correct pronunciation of his name. However, the Bible is very clear about God's concern for this person. Let's learn today about God's choice of friends. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you for an opportunity to learn from your word about people that you have chosen to call your friends. Bless now the reading of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to start out today with a definition of friendship from the Encyclopedia Britannica. And they tell us that friendship is a state of enduring affection, esteem, and trust between two people. Now we remember that Abraham was called the friend of God and that God, to sp God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Can we be a friend of God even if we have wandered away from God and gotten ourselves into all kinds of trouble? We have good news today from the Gospel of Luke, and our first reading is from the Amplified Study Bible, and we're at Luke chapter 19, and we're just going to read the first two verses. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man called Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector, a superintendent to whom others reported, and he was rich. Okay. We got a class note for you. Zacchaeus may not always have been a chief tax collector. Certainly he was not born that way. Maybe he was raised in a God-fearing home. Maybe he was picked on as a kid. But for whatever reason, Zacchaeus had become very wealthy by contracting with the Roman government, by purchasing the right to collect taxes, and by contracting with others to collect those taxes by force, if necessary, and by collecting much more taxes than were required by the government. Got a reading for you from the New Living Translation. And we're back in Luke chapter 19, and we're going to read verses 3 and 4. Speaking of Zacchaeus, he tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. All right. Now, as long as we are talking about trees, and looking up, let's remember another passage of scripture from Genesis about Abraham, the friend of God. And we're in the Amplified Study Bible again. And we're at Genesis 
chapter 18, and we're just going to read the first three verses. Now the Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth trees in Mamre while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he raised his eyes and looked up, behold, three men were standing a little distance from him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Abraham said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, Please do not pass by your servant without stopping to visit. Okay, now we have a definition from Nelson's Illustrated Bible Dictionary. One of two definitions today, as a matter of fact. Our first definition is of the word reconciliation. And reconciliation is the process by which God and people are brought together again. The Bible teaches that they are alienated from one another because of God's holiness and human sinfulness. Although God loves the sinner, it is impossible for him not to judge sin. Therefore, in biblical reconciliation, both parties are affected. Through the sacri sacrifice of Christ, people's sins are atoned for, and God's wrath is appeased. Thus, a relationship of hostility and alienation is changed into one of peace and fellowship. Okay, now in the story of Zacchaeus, we see that God's friend obeys the voice of Jesus, gets down out of the tree, and receives Jesus gladly and joyfully into his house. Zacchaeus, in his sinful life, had been bound by the love of money and we see that because of Jesus' visitation, kindness, and spending time at Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus was able to get free of his past sins and to let go of the greed, selfishness, and avarice that he had been trapped by. Just as Abraham, Abraham had walked away from the teeming metropolis of Ur and his idolatry. Moses had given up on his claim to nobility, and Paul the Apostle, formerly Saul of Tarsus, had walked away from his power and position as a Pharisee in the Jewish Sanhedrin. Got a reading for you from the English Standard Version. And we're at Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and as the sand is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Now, our other definition from Nelson's is of the word salvation. 
And Nelson says that the salvation that comes through Christ may be described in three tenses, past, present, and future. When, when people believe in Christ, they are saved. We, but we are also in the process of being saved from the power of sin. Finally, we shall be saved from the very presence of sin. God releases into our, into our lives today the power of Christ's resurrection and allows us a foretaste of our future life as his children. Our experience of salvation will be complete when Christ returns and the kingdom of God is fully revealed. Okay, we got a reading from the New Living Translation. And we're at Luke chapter 19, verses 5 through 10. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, Quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. <clears throat> now, Jesus' call to Zacchaeus was shocking to most people. Zacchaeus was not someone who was a victim of the system. He was the system. Jesus called to Zacchaeus while Zacchaeus was living in sin calling into being something that only Jesus could see. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. In fact, although we start off with Zacchaeus looking for Jesus, we find out that what was really happening is that Jesus came to Jericho looking for Zacchaeus. Jesus knows who we are, what we have done, what we have suffered, and even how we are suffering today. Jesus is calling us, me and you, by name. We need only respond by faith, by saying yes. God can do the miracle we need in our life, just as he did for Zacchaeus, for Abraham, Moses, Paul the Apostle, and many others. We need only respond by faith, by saying yes to his call to us. Got a little class roundup for you. God does not look at or consider our past, our mistakes, or even our deliberate bad choices. We don't know about the kind of upbringing, friendships, or problems 
that may have led to Zacchaeus entering into a sinful life. Jesus didn't call Zacchaeus a sinner. He simply called Zacchaeus to come down out of that tree. No more looking. No more wondering for Zacchaeus. Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And Jesus is calling each of us today to listen to him, to follow him, and to trust him. Just as Zacchaeus did, Jesus wants us to be his friend. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful new day. Thank you for the hope we can find in this story of your friend, someone you called named Zacchaeus. Bless the reading for each of us this week, we pray. The reading of your word, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Have a great week.